are you a good driver? If you think you're a good driver, please raise your hand. Wow, where have you all been while I was driving? No, no, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Now, if you ever touched your cell phone while driving, even just to look at a time for a brief moment, please lower your hand. So perhaps we should all reconsider our first answer. Maybe you are not as good as a driver as you would like to think. How comfortable are you with putting your life in the hands of a total stranger when they get behind the wheel? Actually, it doesn't really matter because you're already doing it every single day. On your way here today, you put your life in the hands of many other drivers you don't know who might have been texting, reading emails, or falling asleep. But do we have a choice? I believe we do, and I'm not the only one. In fact, today we're witnessing one of the biggest technological arms races in history, a race towards autonomous cars. So what is an autonomous car? The answer is simple. It's complicated. But if I had to think of an easy definition, I would say that autonomous cars are cars that take you from point A to B without any intervention of a human driver. Most of these cars will have three things in common. They will rely on sensor and cameras that will allow them to communicate with other cars as well as the surrounding. As you see, externally, they could look very similar to the cars we have today, maybe minus the steering wheel and the pedals. And most of these cars will be electric cars. The world's largest car manufacturers, technological giants, and even governments are already investing in this race. All of them building financial, legal, and technological structures to support this race. This arm race is already changing our lives. But will it change them for the better or worse? Join me for a ride towards autonomous cars, and I'll show you things that no one has told you about these cars. From the first moment I started law school, I was looking for that extra thing, something that adds value to the bigger picture, something beyond legal frameworks. And that's what led me to research autonomous cars in my third year. I wanted to understand the implication of this new technology, the advantages and the risks. Because when it comes to autonomous cars, it's not just about designing technology. It's about designing reality. You see, this is why my team and I decided to research the field of autonomous cars from a different point of view. While most people write only about technological aspects or only examine ethical challenges, we combined all those issues and more in one unified book. We dedicated our days and nights to our research, talking with government officials, academic researchers, and global experts from the technological, legal, and automotive companies. We even became some kind of authority in this field, in such a way that numerous stakeholders ask and seek for our legal opinion, and asking for the book my team and I wrote. Today, we're in the final stages of completing this book, which will serve as a foundation for Israel's first bill regarding autonomous cars. So what is, when we talk about autonomous car, it's not just about commuting, it's about communication. It's not about engines of cars, it's about engines of growth. And it's not about horsepower, it's about empowering people. Our cars are going to communicate with other cars and even with their environment by reading road signage and using advanced wireless technology. They will adapt to weather condition and even stop automatically if something jumps in front of their path. So now, 
you can give your full attention to something much more important than your commute, human communication. And there is more. As this technology will grow into the industry, more jobs will emerge. Second, we can work while we drive. So just think about how much more productive we can be. And third, shipping companies such as DHL and FedEx can reduce costs by having a whole fleet of driverless cars. And by the way, forget about wasting time looking for parking. Just tell the car, drop me off at TEDx Tel Aviv and go find parking. Imagine how much time you would save, right? Amazing. But will cars that drive themselves make people more powerful or less powerful? Although it seems like our human power has been taken away and we are losing power, we are actually being empowered. Have a look at my grandparents that unfortunately are not with us anymore. My grandfather stopped in a green light, never kept in his lane, and drove extremely slowly, which drove me crazy. My grandmother in her last year couldn't drive anymore, so all the drivers in the family leaned in. About my little sister, she got a VIB service from mom and dad's taxi. And parents in the audience, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You see, my family is not different from your family. My family represents the risky drivers, those who cannot drive, the disabled, and those poor parents that wasted a lot of time running around. With autonomous cars, all these challenges will vanish. Any human can reach any destination he desires. And to me, that is very empowering. But we're not just talking about empowering people's lives. This technology is saving our lives. This is the number of people that lost their lives as a result of car accident around the world in just one year. That's more than 103,000 per month and more than 3,400 daily. That means that by the time I will finish this talk, 28 more people will die on our roads. But imagine we can reduce this number by 90%. Recent studies shows that we are looking at 90% reduction in road fatalities thanks to the advanced automatic systems of autonomous cars. So I guess this technological arm race is changing our lives for the better. But autonomous cars will also introduce many new challenges and ethical dilemmas that are not easy to help and overcome. Let's say it's 7 p.m. You're after a long day at work, you get into your car and drive home. Suddenly, a ball bounces on the road in front of you, followed by a young girl who doesn't see your car. You have a split second to make a decision that will change the rest of your life. You have several options, none of them good. You can either swerve to the left and crash into a wall, swerve to the right and hit the rest of the kids, or try to break and hit a little girl. Every decision will end in a crash and someone being hurt. And you, and only you, have to make this decision. So what would you do? We all know there is no law telling you how to act. And this, this is not an oversight of the legal system. The reason why there is no law is because it's impossible to predict and determine a human behavior in such situations. Just the car software will choose between multiple courses of action. All of them will cause harm. But the question is, for who and how much? Some scenarios will face the computer with an easier ethical dilemmas to handle, such as four people against one. But imagine a situation where the car need to make a choice of who's going to live between a child and a senior, between a pedestrian or the car owner. 
between you or the person sitting next to you right now? What algorithm can make such a decision? It's not the first time you heard about those scenes. Hollywood brought it to the screen a long time ago. Jumped in the water. You are in danger. You are in danger. Save her! Save the girl! Save her! So what should a default setting be? Protect the passenger at all costs or save as many lives as possible? And there's more questions. Can we trust machines that has no feelings? Who will be responsible for damage caused by a driverless car? And can our legal system support such a technology? I believe we can, we need, and we should trust machines. Perhaps artificial intelligence is precisely what we need. Some rational cold risk calculation that chooses the least damaging option. I know it's not easy to hear. And I must tell you, it's not easy for me to say. But just think about how you felt when I asked you if you trust other drivers. As long as we choose to save as many lives at the cost of fewer lives, we can and we need to trust machines. About my second question, specific chain of events led to this result. Your autonomous car was on its way to pick you up, but unfortunately, something went wrong. It might have been the car system or a bad weather condition. Luckily, no one was being hurt, but there is a lot of damage. Someone is going to be liable and will need to pay. But who? Who do you sue? There is no person driving the car. So who will be responsible for the damage? The car owner? Maybe the programmer of the car's software? I believe that the car manufacturers should be held accountable, as they have the ability to fix these issues and the incentive to prevent them from reoccurring. Regard my third question. With our current legal system, I have to say no. But the reason I'm standing here is because someone brought it up and asked my team and I to offer a relevant legal framework. Therefore, I do believe that as much as the technology develops, in the end, the regulation will get there. And there is one more thing. You may recall last year that a pair of hackers from the US demonstrated that they could remotely hijack the driving car. They took over the car's brakes, the car's steering, and the car's speed. All that using systems connected to the internet. And that was in a regular car. So just think about what can happen with autonomous cars that are remotely and exclusively controlled by software. You can sit in your autonomous car and all of a sudden, a hacker is taking control over your car's brakes and your car's steering. The hacker is in charge, and you, you are his hostage. But it's not all that bad. Uh, car manufacturers are preparing to prevent hacks from the very early stages of designing autonomous cars. They call it secure by design. But what about ethical by design? or legal by design, we need to consider all these challenges already in the designing stage. But the question is, how? I believe that the way to handle these challenges is by breaking what I call the technology circle. Every innovation starts with an idea, and this idea is being translated to a new technology. This new technology can affect many aspects in our daily life. For example, autonomous cars will affect our legal system 
and create liability problems. So these problems need solutions in the form of regulation. And the new regulation causes a need to adapt the technology. But here is the problem. The speed that the technology is changing is so fast compared to the speed of the regulation that there is no way of catching up. We are constantly chasing our tails. But we have to break this circle. We can't let this happen with autonomous cars. Because with autonomous cars, people's lives are at stake. It's our moral duty to consider all the challenges and all the dilemmas already in the designing stage. Secure by design, legal by design, and ethical by design. What the future holds is a tough question, particularly in relation to the rapidly evolving technology compared to the legal system that is dragging behind. But autonomous cars will arrive, and they will affect our lives in so many ways and disciplines that goes far beyond commuting. In fact, they already do. But only if we will be brave enough to address the most difficult and complicated issues in the field of autonomous cars, we can truly shift from designing technology to designing reality. Thank you very much.